But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Tayo po ay may katagumpayan dahil po sa ating pananampalataya sa ating Panginoong Jesus na tagapagligtas ng lahat. At dahil dyan, tayo po ay nakakapagpasalamat sa Diyos at sa araw na ito, tayo po ay muling matututo. Kaya isang lubos na pinagpalang hapon po sa bawat isa sa The School of Church Builders at sa bawat kasamang manunood. Tayo po ay manalangin. Purihin ka, aming Diyos Ama na makapangyarihan sa lahat. Naluluklok sa kaitaas-taasan. Salamat po sa hapong ito na kami ay matututo sa iyong katotohanan at sa buhay at spirito ng iyong salita. Pakalubusin mo kami, puspusin mo kami ng lahat ng aming pangangailangan in life and in godliness so that we will pursue and advance to our destiny. This we pray in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Everyone say, Amen and Amen. Our topic for today is about the journey it takes towards our destiny. The journey it takes towards our destiny. So, according to Matthew chapter 4, verse 17 and 18, From that time when Jesus began to preach and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And Jesus, walking by the sea of Galilee, saw two brothers, Simon called Peter, and Andrew his brother. Casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. So as we all know, when we receive the kingdom of God and salvation, when Jesus and His words had been spoken to us, um, it is only the beginning of our journey with God. So when Jesus called out to them, sabi ng Panginoong Isus, Come, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. So there is the point of following Lord Jesus Christ after salvation and receiving the kingdom of God. Meaning, we are just uh, ab we are just about to start, or we are just about to begin our journey with God. So I'm sure uh, you have heard about Pastor Abed Montiel's teaching. the journey towards destiny but this time the journey it takes so what does it take on our journey maybe hers was uh, more on inclined sa old testament context but as for this study we will be more inclined in the new testament all right so pertaining about destiny specific wise for me it is um paano ito mangyayari how when and where? Where is this destiny? Specific wise, we cannot really tell. But as far as I understand, this is what our destiny is all about. Romans chapter 12 verse 2. Do not be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what's, what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. So this is our destiny. Kung ano ang kalooban ng Panginoon, ano ang mabuti, kalugod-lugod, at ganap. So this is our destiny. As far as God had planned for us in His foreknowledge, God is about to complete this good, pleasing, and perfect will to our lives. That's why when we have that salvation received in our lives, when we have received the kingdom of God, it is not yet finished. We are just about to begin. Alright? We are just about to begin. So, it is important to know what the journey takes for us. So, according to 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9, ang Panginoon ay hindi nagpapabaya sa ating mga sa, kan sa kanyang pangako gaya ng inaakala ng ilan. Mga kapatid, napakagandang katotohanan po ito sa atin ng sagayon sa ating kaligtasan at pagtanggap sa kaharian ng Diyos mula sa ating Panginoong Isus. We will have that courage and confidence to move forward 
to this destiny. So, ang Panginoon ay hindi nagpapabaya sa kanyang mga uh, pangako, gaya ng inaakala ng ilan. So, what a wonderful truth for us. So, He will not allow, God will not allow that His will, okay, His good, pleasing, and perfect will for you, for me, and for everyone who believes in the name of Christ Jesus, ay hindi makumpleto po ito. That's why, We need to take this journey. We need to take this journey. So now, as we um, as we um, sail forth through this journey, we, uh, when we abide in this move of God and work in God of our lives, it requires, when we say journey, it requires invading new territories. All right, invading new territories, crossing unfamiliar domains, and advancing God's rulership. Ulitin ko po, abiding in the move of God, taking this journey requires invading new territories, crossing unfamiliar domains, and advancing God's rulership. So we need to ready up ourselves. Okay, we need to prepare ourselves for this journey. So, ang Diyos ay tapat sa kanyang pangako at hindi siya titigil hanggat hindi natutupad ang kanyang plano. Ang Diyos ay tapat sa kanyang pangako at hindi po siya titigil hanggat hindi natutupad ang kanyang pangaplano. Let's uh, take this heartily. Okay? They, let's take this by heart. Let's prepare ourselves. That is why He is commanding us to move forward, cross to the other side. How? He will provide instruction. He will lead us and give a clear, clear message in order for us to move. So God is saying we shall move forward, advance, break forth. Amen? God is commanding. So before He commands us, we need to find that qualification in ourselves. No? We need to find that qualification. So what does it take to be in this journey? Just two. Number one, be a son in a kingdom. Second, follow orders. Be a son in a kingdom, follow orders. What do I mean by be a son in a kingdom? Ito po yung tinalakay, tinalakay na rin ng ating mentor, si Pastor Wilbert, that living in the dimensions of the kingdom, We should be a son in the kingdom. So what does it mean to be a son in the kingdom? Sabi sa John chapter 1 verse 12, Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believe in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children of God speaks of immaturity. Alright, children. It speaks of um, immaturity and needs more needs more um, education, needs more um, logical thinking. So that speaks of children. But according to Romans chapter 8, okay, according to Romans chapter 8 verse 14, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit Himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. Take note of this. And if children, then heirs. Heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with Him, that we may also be glorified in Him. So you see the difference? For as many as are led by the Spirit, they, these are the sons of God. Did We did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but the spirit of adoption by whom we can cry out, Abba, Father. Kaya naman tayo nakakonsider sons. No, we are no longer slaves to fear. Kagaya ng immature children na takot sa dilim, takot sa multo, takot sa mga uncertainties, those are for children. But to those who receive and have been led by the spirit, these are the sons of God. And take note of verse 16. Again, I will repeat. 
The Spirit Himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And look at the transition. And if children, then heirs. And heirs of God, joint heirs of Christ. So ito yung mga sons. No? From children, then heirs. There is the transition needed, required to be qualified to be the sons of the kingdom. These are the sons of God who are led by the Spirit. No longer bondage of sin. No longer bandage of fear, but of courage and strength from Most High. Okay? These are the sons of God. So, that's the difference between children and sons. We need to be the sons of the kingdom. To explain further, this is how I always um, define between children and sons. You know what? Pagdating sa salvation, sa ating kaligtasan at pananampalataya, marami po ang naiwan sa salvation, sa pag-ibig ng Diyos, kapatawaran ng Diyos, uh, pag, uh, pag-unawa ng Diyos sa ating mga kahinaan. Those are for children. Okay? But we need to mature. We need to rise up. Kaya nga po, marami po ako sa mga contemporary ko, I know, mas marami sila because they are very fond of the grace uh, the grace theory or the grace teaching. Okay? Mas gusto nila yun. Bakit? Kasi doon, masagana ang pag-ibig. Okay lang ang magkamali, ang patawaran ng Diyos. Lagi tayong pinapatawad. Inuunawa ng Diyos. Lagi na lang pang unawa ng Diyos at pag-ibig ng Diyos. Yes! As far as God is concerned, hindi na po pinagtatalunan niyan. Nariyan na po yan, mga kapatid. Amen? Diyan po tayo lahat nagsimula. Diyan po tayo lahat talaga. As far as God is concerned, there is no better way to know God but, the, but by the love of God through His Son, Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, we know that. But, but, hindi po dapat nananatili sa Puro kapatawaran, pagkunawa ng ating kainaan. Hindi po tayo dinisenyo ng Panginoon sa kainaan at sa takot. Alright? For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear. So, he, a righteous man may fall seven times, but he will rise up. Ganun po ang sons. Okay? So, yung mga Kristiyanong palaging binibaby, okay? It is alright, mga kapatid. Definitely, it is okay in the eyes of God. But on the other hand, hindi po laging ganun. Kung tayo po ay matagal ng kristyano, ilang taon na sa pananampalataya, okay? Ilang taon na, 10 years, 5 years in the salvation of God, dapat na manatili po iyan. Ngunit hindi po magtatapos riyan. Kagaya ng salvation ng pag-ibig, Imagine, may anak ka. Okay? Imagine may anak ka. 18 anyos. O sabihin natin, 21 anyos. Okay? 21 years old. Nung siya ay mga teenager, okay lang kasi talagang alam natin na madalas siya lumipad ng isip. Maraming mga bagay-bagay na sa rurok sila ng discovery of life. So, Madalas yan, makaiwan ng plancha, makaiwan ng tubig, makaiwan ng mga bukas na uh, kalan. So, it is forgivable. Pero pag ayan ay nagtatrabaho na, 21 anyos, 22 anyos, nakakaiwan pa ng mga bagay-bagay na ganyan. Abay, okay lang sa toddler 3 years old, 7 years old na anak, ang cute-cute mo talaga, mahal na mahal kita, okay lang yan anak. Pero pagdating sa ating pagkakristyano at pananampalataya, we need to rise up. We need to mature. Okay? So, yung grace yung salvation ng Panginoon, there is no problem with that. Ang problema pag na-exploit po ng mga kristyano at sampung taon ng mananampalataya, lagi mo pa rin, lagi pa rin nabubuhay sa kinakailangan unawain sila. Mga kapatid, we need to be son. We need to be to become a son in the kingdom. Okay? Parang baby, okay lang yan sa una. 
no ganyan ka usapin pero abay pag mature na ang usapin na diyan ay welfare na ng tahanan okay pag iyan ay nagmature na ang usapan na diyan bills okay dapat tumutulong na yan sa bills ng tahanan okay sa pagkain ng tahanan sa mga gawaing bahay abay hindi na po pinag-uusapan ang cute-cute mo okay lang diyan matulog ka lang diyan anak makabasag makaiwan ka lang diyan okay so you see the difference between children and sons So in the same way God designed us not to be okay to live in bondage again to fear okay but we need to be led pangunahan tayo ng Panginoon to be sons in the kingdom. So ang usapan na po dito mga kapatid ay ibang mga bagay na kagaya ko po madalas akong kasama ng aking tatay okay madalas akong kasama ng aking tatay so ang usapan na namin ay hindi na kung gaano ko kung gaano po ako um, yung mga maliliit na bagay. Ngunit ang pinag-uusapan na namin, ano yung mga kinakailangan sa bahay bilhin, ano yung kinakailangan sa bahay gawin para mas maayos, ano yung kinakailangan sa mga paupahan namin. So business na po ang pinag-uusapan outside house pero pag ikaw ay bata pa puro patungkol sa loob ng tahanan. Okay? Kaya ang disenyo po sa atin ng Panginoon, we need to be a local church, local believers, locally based, growing, maturing, but the influence shall be global. Global po. So, dapat po tayong bilang mga Kristiyano, as we sail forth, advance forward the kingdom of God, okay? Advancing um, new territories, okay? Yung mga dominions and domains, kinakailangan natin mapuntahan and advance the rulership of God. It is very clear that we need to move forward. That is why even mostly Christian na po ang maraming nagkiklaim sa bansang Pilipinas. No? Everywhere, sikat na sikat na po ang Christianity. But the thing is, there is no influence. There is no advancing. Why? Sapagkat na natili lamang sa loob ng kanilang personal na buhay ang struggle. No, we need to rise up. I mean, the Spirit of God is saying we need to rise up. We need to mature as sons of God. So, sa atin, ang pinag-uusapan na po ay ang pagahari ng Diyos. Ay ang pagahari po ng Diyos. So, that is the journey of the sons in the kingdom. Sabi nga ni Pastor Wilbert, If we, if we are sons of the kingdom, we must represent and advance the kingdom. We must represent and advance the kingdom. Okay? We must represent and advance the kingdom. So the welfare of the Father God, the business of the Father God is our main concern. Okay? So tapos na po yung mga panahon na puro pansarili, puro lokal na Um, sa loob lang ng tahanan ng ating mga iniisip. Okay? We need to cross over. We need to cross over. So, second thing is, ayun nga, we need to follow orders. We need to follow orders to be qualified for this journey. Okay? So, ang ating pong pagbabasayan ng ating pag-aaral ay nasa Matthew chapter 8. So, hindi ko na po babasahin yung um, verse 1 hanggang 16. Matthew chapter 8 verse 1 hanggang 16. To make the story short, um, in these verses, Matthew chapter 8 verse 1 to 16, uh, there are four scenarios of healing dito po sa nasusulat. Number one, yung Jesus cleansed a man with leprosy. Number two, paralyzed servant of the centurion na nasa bahay, pinagaling ng Panginoong Isus nung nakasalubong niya pa lamang ang centurion sa daanan. And number three, yung Peter's mother-in-law, pinagaling niya rin. Then, yung many demon possessed and sick na dinala sa kanya nung kagabihan ng yun, pinagaling ng Panginoong Isus. So, Those were the four scenarios of healing from Matthew chapter 8 verse 1 to 16. So, according to these verses, sabi naman sa 
um, verse 17, this was to fulfill what was spoken through prophet Isaiah. He took up our infirmities and bore our diseases. He took up our infirmities and bore our diseases. So this is from the proto evangelio the first mention of uh, the, the salvation. Okay? From Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. Then the seed of the woman will crush his head, Satan's head, the, the author of sin, but uh, he will strike his heel. The proto-evangelio or the first mention of the gospel of salvation. So it is aligned with this Matthew chapter 8, verse 17. He took up our infirmities and bore our diseases. So we need to have this background from Matthew chapter 8, verse 1 to 16 as the... Um, the um, reference, okay, of verse 17. He took up our infirmities and bore our diseases. So meaning, this is the salvation of men when we receive healing, deliverance from our God. That salvation and kingdom has come to our lives He, when we were healed from our diseases of sin and infirmities iniquities so sin for short but right after that verse 1 to 17 of Matthew chapter 8 there comes verse 18 this is now the crossing over this is now the journey okay so number one required of uh, how it takes what does it take to be um, on this journey towards our destiny number one we need to be sons second we need to follow orders so that we can cross over we need to follow orders so sabi dito sa verse 18 when jesus saw the crowd around him he gave orders to cross to the other side of the lake so when jesus gave an order for them to the to go to the other side this is a scenario of when Jesus gave order, when we follow order, we will go somewhere. This is according to Dr. Jonathan David. Follow orders and you will go somewhere. May isa pa siyang sinabi na um, if, if um, um, sige, let's move forward. Let's go back to verse 16 and 17. Sabi dito, verse 16 and 17, When evening came, many who were demon-possessed were brought back to him and drove out the spirits with a word and healed all the sick. This was to fulfill what was spoken through prophet Isaiah. So there is a word spoken. No? He healed, sabi, demon possessed were brought to him. He drove out the spirits with a word and healed all the sick. This was to fulfill what was spoken. So a word was spoken. So follow orders, you will go somewhere. So this is one of the qualification to go forth in a journey. Okay, if you are not sent, you just went, sabi ni Dr. Jonathan David. Okay? If you are not sent, you just went. So, kinakailangan ng word that will be spoken to us. A word that will be spoken to us. Kagaya nung itinuturo sa atin ng ating mentor na si Pastor Wilbert. We need to have that prophetic word so that we will advance forth. We need to have that prophetic word so that we can go out from what we have from our comfort zone to what God has destined for us. This is one of the qualifications to set forth on a journey, to set sail on our journey towards the destiny. So we need to follow orders. We need to have that word spoken to us. Okay, a prophetic word, Pastor Wilbert said, a prophetic word is a word spoken in the past. That is about to happen in the present. A word spoken in the past that is about to happen in the present. That is why 
we need to be attentive and active listener of the prophetic word coming from our grace carrier, from in, coming from those people that when they speak to us, we have, we will find a direction where God wants us to be in that destiny. So this is an important qualification to set forth a journey towards our destiny. What it, this is what it takes. Second, follow orders. We need to follow orders. Okay? Follow orders and you will go somewhere. So, as we can see, then there came the fulfillment of God's prophetic word in Matthew chapter 8, verse 17. No? This was to fulfill, verse 17, that was spoken through the prophet Isaiah. He took up our infirmities and bore our diseases. So, with a word, when we follow orders, we will be able to possess new territories. Amen? With a word and following orders, we will be able to possess new territories. Amen? That is why this is what it takes to set forth in a journey. We need to listen. We need to be actively listening and attentive sa ating mga carrier ng word, those who gives us the word of instruction, kung sino yung mga nagsasalita sa atin ng um, um, ng mga kapahayagan ng Diyos at lalo natin nakikilala ang Diyos at ang kanyang direksyon, abay, wag po natin itong tatandanan. Okay, wag natin itatanggi ang ating mga sarili because when we follow their orders, we will be able to possess new territories. So this is what it takes. So there has been a prophetic word that will be fulfilled. Kung gusto po natin mga kapatid, yung destiny ma-fulfill sa atin. His will, God's will, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. Ang kanyang mabuti, kalugod-lugod, at ganap na kalooban ng Panginoon para sa ating buhay. Amen. Doon tayo nakaka-aranas, doon tayo nakakalakad sa dakilang plano ng Diyos, sa mabuting kalooban ng Diyos, kung kaya naman nasasabi natin sa ating buhay that God is good, God is faithful. So, these are the qualifications so that uh, we will be full of courage, full of confidence, empowered by the Holy Spirit as we go forth to the journey God has set for us. So, when He gave orders for what we will be doing, it is always opposite from where the crowd is going. Ulitin ko po, when He gave orders for what we will be doing, it is always opposite from where the crowd is going. So dahil maraming pinagaling ang Panginoong Isus dito sa Matthew chapter 8, marami ang sumunod, so kinakailangan niyang mag-opposite from where the crowd is going. They cross to the other side. Okay? That is why, even this uh, kind of teaching and preaching that uh, we need to be strong, we need to be sons in the kingdom, mature, accurate, okay? We need to be more accurate in the word of God, even though, okay, even though hindi popular ang mensahe, even though mas nakararami doon sa mas gusto nila. But when God gave orders, what we are about to do, it is always opposite from where the crowd is go going. Alam niyo po, very remarkable yung um, yung paghalimbawa ni Pastor Wilbert sa atin pong sa atin pong tribo ng School of Church Builder. Sabi niya, kagaya ng isang ng mga sundalo, kung sino yung mga assigned talaga sa mga important important assignment, okay? Usually, hindi yan ina-announce sa spotlight. Bakit? Kasi ma mababasted ng kaaway, ng kalaban. So, it is always um, tawag dito highly confidential. Yung mga pangalan ng gagawa, yung mga pangalan ng mga magki-carry out ng order na ito. Kung kagaya ng mga naka-assign na 
um, naka-assign na pumatay kay Bin Laden, hindi sila ina-announce. And yet, they have the most important assignment in the world to destroy terrorism. And even like us in the kingdom of God, we may not be popular, we may not be in the spotlight, but we take the best assignment from the Lord to create, to establish, to help um, form a strong church that will advance God's kingdom, all right, that will um, conquer new territories, yung mga, um, mga kaugalian, yung mga popular-minded of Christianity, of grace and salvation na nabuhay na sa puro kasalanan dahil daw sa punong-puno sila ng pag-ibig at kapatawalan. Abay, isa tayo sa mga magtutuwid sa kanila. Okay, yung mga kagaya nitong mensahe, they need to follow orders. Hindi puro dahil sa sobrang uh, na-exploit nila ang grasya at pag-ibig ng Panginoon, okay lang magkamali, okay lang hindi sumunod sa pastor. Abay, inaccurate behavior po yun. So, we are always expect, okay, that we will be always against the crowd. Okay? Like Paul. So, we have that pattern. And as long as we have that prophetic word speaking to us, validated by the word of truth, we know that we will be accurate sons of God, sons of the kingdom, following orders. So, many believers, they always look to the kingdom of God, but they do not look to follow orders. Alright? They always uh, neglect obedience. That's why obedience is better than sacrifice. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Kaya wag po natin um, babaliwalain yung mga simple orders. Simple orders of our mentors, simple orders, instruction of our grace carrier, of those who brings of those who bring us the word, who imparts to us the word, the life of the spirit, of the word of truth. Dapat, we need to follow orders. I will be not here speaking to you. I will not be here speaking to you if hindi po ako nag-honor, nakinig sa aking grace carrier, sa nagdadala ng salita sa aking buhay, nagdadala ng katotohanan sa aking buhay. That is why narito po ako ngayon nagsasalita ngayon. So, that, those are the two qualifications to set forth in a journey of what it takes to be in this journey towards our destiny. Number one, sons of the kingdom and following orders. So, as we can see from Matthew chapter 8, nasa um, verse 18 na tayo. When Jesus saw the crowd around him, he gave orders to cross to the other side of the lake. Alright, so this na, this is now of the journey, crossing over. Then, a teacher of the law came to him and said, Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus replied, Foxes have dens and birds have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. Another disciple said to him, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. But Jesus told him, follow me and let the dead bury their own dead. So, we see the importance of following orders. Then, there came, okay, so, makita natin, when we are now about to start our journey, okay, when we are now about to start our journey, we need to have those um, um, knowledge, wisdom, and truth from the Lord so that um, hindi tayo um, magkulang sa ating mga gagawin at pagsunod para sa Panginoon. On our journey with God, this requires truth and principles of the kingdom so that this will help us continue on the journey 
until we reach our corporate destiny, His good, pleasing, and perfect will, His will, purposes, and plans. So, in, the, in our crossing over, in, in this journey, okay, towards our destiny, we need to have this truth and principles of the kingdom. Why? This will be our strength. This will be our fuel, okay, to continue on this journey. And until we reach our corporate destiny, His good, pleasing, and perfect will, His plans, wills, and purposes. So, para hindi po tayo kapusin, para hindi tayo kulaangin sa pagpapatuloy dito, we need these truths to ponder. We need these truths to ponder. Number one, there is no one like our God. There is no one like our God. Number one, truth to ponder. Isaiah chapter 46 verse 22 Hanggang 23. Lumapit kayo sa akin at kayo ay maliligtas. Kayong mga tao sa buong daigdig, walang ibang Diyos maliban sa akin. Ako ay tapat sa aking pangako at hindi magbabago at tutuparin ko ang aking mga pangako. Lahat ng tao ay luluhod sa aking harapan at mga ngakong sila'y magiging tapat sa akin. Okay? According to Isaiah, verse four, uh, Isaiah 47, verse 9 to 10, Alalahanin ninyo ang mga nakaraang pangyayari. Inyong kilalanin ako lamang ang Diyos at maliban sa akin ay wala nang iba. Sa simula pa'y itinakda ko na at akin inihayag kung ano ang magaganap. Sinabi kong tiyak na magaganap ang lahat ng balak ko at gagawin ko ang lahat ng gusto kong gawin. So, in our journey, in our crossing over to conquer new territories, okay, we need to have these truths to, fun, to ponder. And number one truth is there is no one like our God. Kapag binasa po natin ang buong Biblia, aside from this Isaiah 46 and 47, we can notice when God declares a promise, when God declares His plan, lagi niya pong idinidikit ang kanyang pangalan. Bakit? Gusto po maunawaan ng Diyos sa bawat, ng bawat isa na kanyang mga tagasunod na walang katulad niya. Alam niyo po, maraming katotohanan patungkol sa Diyos. Praise God for His sovereignty. Praise God for His faithfulness. Praise God for His goodness. But take note of this. Um, take note of this. The most um, distinct character of God is there is no one like our God because He is faithful. Because He is faithful to His promise. The reason why He, he is a distinct from any other God, from any other personalities, it's because He is faithful. That's why there is no one like our God. Tuwing binabanggit niya ang kanyang pangalan, balikan natin Isaiah 46. Lumapit kayo sa akin at kayo ay maliligtas. Kayong mga tao sa buong daigdig, walang ibang Diyos maliban sa akin. Ako ay tapat sa aking pangako at hindi magbabago. At tutuparin ko ang aking mga pangako. Okay? Nakita natin, tuwing nangangako ang Diyos, kinakasangkapan niya ang kanyang pangalan. Bakit? Upang malaman natin na walang ibang Diyos katulad niya sapagkat siya lang ang nangako na hindi napapako. Okay? That is the most distinct characteristic of God. Because whatever He says, He will surely accomplish. Amen? He will surely fulfill. Walang ibang Diyos maliban sa akin, ako ay tapat sa aking pangako. That is why number one, truth to ponder on our journey. God will surely, God will surely, and He is decided to complete His plan. Kaya po sa ating mga Kristiyano, hindi po ma makikitaan na pwedeng mag-backslide. Bakit? Sure sa kanilang mga puso. 
na sure din ang Panginoon sa kanyang plano. Sabi nga ni Dr. Jonathan David, There is no plan B. God's plan is fixed. God's plan is fixed. There is no plan B. Only plan A. Kung ano'y sinabi niya, His good, pleasing, and perfect will let us hold to these promises. Kaya ang ating pag-asa kay Kristo Jesus, it is the hope of glory. Ang pag-asa ng kaluwalhatian, hindi lang ordinaryo pag-asa. Pag-asa po ito na may kaluwalhatian ng Diyos. That is why, lagi sinasabi ng Diyos, there is no one like me. Because whatever I say, I will surely do. Ayun po ang pinakamahalagang katotohanan sa buhay nating mga Kristiyano na panghawakan na si Kristo, na siyang nabuhay na mag-uli, na pinatunayan niya ang buhay ang kanyang salita. Walang ibang katulad niya na siyang nabuhay na mag-uli, kundi ang ating Diyos lamang. So napakahalagang katotohanan po sa atin ito bilang mga Kristiyano sapagkat dito nakaangkla ang ating pananampalataya, dito nakaangkla ang ating buhay, ang ating pag-asa. At kapag dito nakaangkla sa kanyang katapatan na nakadikit lagi ang kanyang pangalan, ay hindi po talaga ang isang buhay ng Kristiyano ay hindi mabibigo. Ay hindi mabibigo. Okay? There is no one like our God. Kaya po, kakaiba. The most distinct character of our God, whenever He promised, He signed it with His name. Pinipirmahan niya ng kanyang pangalan. At kapag pinirmahan ng kanyang pangalan, ng Diyos na maluwalhati, nalulutlo at siyang may lalang at may control sa lahat ng bagay, abay wag na po tayo magduda. Kaya ang isang buhay ng mga tunay na mga mananampalataya, laging nagpapatuloy, laging sumasagana at laging hindi tumitigil. Bakit? Kasi walang katulad ang aming Diyos. Ang Diyos ay idinikit ang kanyang pangalan na dakila sa lahat sa kanyang pangako. Laging kinakasangkapan niya ng kanyang pangalan ang kanyang pangako. Hallelujah. Puri napakagandang katotohanan po ito. Basic but foundation. Okay? Truths to ponder so that when we set sail through this journey, buo po ang ating pag-asa. Buo ang ating pag-asa. So hindi mga sirkumstansya, hindi sitwasyon ang magpapasya. Okay? Kundi ang Diyos na siyang sa lahat ay dakila. Okay? Hindi ang sitwasyon, hindi ang sitwagstansya ang magpapansya, kundi ang Diyos na siyang dakila. Hallelujah. Praise God for this truth. There is no one like our God. He always signed His promises with His name, Jesus, our God. So, okay. Number, so, what God says, it happens. Why? Because that is the God factor. That is the God factor. Whenever He promised in His Word, He signed it with His name. The God factor in His Word. Okay? Number two, truth to ponder, there is a response required on us. There is a response required on us. Isaiah chapter 48, verse 17, Thus says the Lord your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord your God who teaches you to profit, who leads you in the way you should go. If only you had paid attention to my commandments, then your well-being you would have been like a river and your righteousness like the waves of the sea. Okay? Kagaya ng um, isa sa mga qualifier, we need to be sons in the kingdom, mature, representing advancing the kingdom of God. How? Um, we're to follow orders. So, sabi dito sa Isaiah chapter 48 verse 17, I am the Lord your God who teaches you to profit, who leads you in the way you should go. Siya ang nangunguna sa atin kung saan tayo tutungo. Okay? And how? If only you had paid attention to my commandments. Follow orders and you will go somewhere. If only you had paid attention to my commandments. 
then your well-being would have been like a river, then your righteousness likes the waves of the sea. Kung kaya naman pala, okay, maraming mga hindi nakakadalo o nakakalakbay patungo doon sa mabuti, kalugod-lugod at ganap na plano ng Diyos, hindi nakakaranas ng ng um, journey patungo doon sa kanilang destiny. Hindi nakakalasap, nakakatikim. Why? They do not pay attention. And those who do not pay attention, basahin natin dito, if only you had paid attention to my commandments, okay, to our grace carrier, to the instruction, to the impartation of life and direction, okay, then your well-being would have been like a river and your righteousness like the waves of the sea. Okay? So kung kaya naman pala walang kabuhay-buhay, walang kagana-gana sa paglilingkod sa Panginoon because they do not pay attention to instruction, to orders of their mentors, of their carriers, okay, of their pastor. Napakalinaw. Sabi dito, river and waves of the sea. Alam niyo po ba ang buhay ng river? Ang river po ay walang tigil. Isa sa aking mga obserbasyon, bakit kaya hindi na uubos yung tubig ng ilog? Uh, yes, may mga ilan na talagang um, natuyok na. Pero bakit yung ibang ilog talaga nakapagtataka pag ako po ay nasa mga ganong mga lugar? Abay, nagtataka po ako bakit ilang taon na nakalipas, hindi pa tayo pinapanganak ilog na yung ilang mga alam nating ano eh um, lugar eh pero bakit hanggang ngayon nariyan pa sila nariyan pa sila because of the grace of God and the blessings and favor of God God controls tuloy-tuloy flowing like a river yung buhay kapag may instruction kapag may, kapag may word ni Lord di ba and Like the waves of the sea, tuloy-tuloy yung alon, di ba? Kahit manatili ka overnight, pag pinagmasdan mo yung alon ng dagat, abay talagang, bakit walang tigil ito? No? So, alam nyo po, ang buhay din nating mga Kristiyano, may tinatawag na uh, cardiac monitor. Nakikita mo, tuloy-tuloy ang tibok dahil sa buhay na biyaya ng Panginoon. Gaya ng ilog at dagat, habang tayo tumatanggap ng mga kaparaanan, mga um, salita ng Diyos, instruction, prinsipyo ng kalangitan, doon po tayo. Then your well-being, yung buhay natin puno ng kasaganaan. No, tuloy-tuloy ang daloy ng puso, yung daloy ng buhay. These words I have spoken to you, they are spirit and they are life. Kaya naman pala ang mga buhay ng mga tunay na naglilingkod ng tapat sa Diyos, nakikinig, sumusunod. Their well-being is like a river. Amen? Tuloy-tuloy po ang pagdaloy. Okay? Tuloy-tuloy ang pag-agos ng buhay sa Panginoon. Hallelujah. Kaya hindi tumitigil, hindi pumapalya, hindi nangihina. There is no room for backslide. Okay, there is no room for backslide. Kundi tuloy-tuloy sa paglilingkod sa Panginoon, kahit anong pagdaanan. Dahil ang river, ang wave, at ang buhay ng Panginoon ay sagana. So, kala ng marami, pag sila ay nag Uh, kasi dito sabi, if only you have paid attention. So, binabayaran po ng sakripisyo at ng panahon. Okay? Binabayaran ng sakripisyo at panahon. Kasi kala ng iba, inconvenient. Disadvantage ang pakikinig. Inconvenient and disadvantage ang pagpapalagok sa Panginoon. Ngunit, They are very, very wrong. So, the more we pay attention, pinaglalaanan ng panahon, ginagastusan, okay, ginagastusan, binibigyan ng atensyon ng oras. Okay? That is why your well-being would have 
flood uh, would have been like a river and waves of the sea. Kami po mag-asawa, lagi ko pong patotoo, nagtatrabaho, may tatlong mga maliliit na anak, may pasyente na tatay sa bahay, at the same time, nagmi-ministeryo. So, ang gawain po namin ay pang-apat na tao. Pero nagtataka kami, bakit mas madalas magkasakit, magsikli ba ang aming mga katrabaho? E, samantalang work and uh, trabaho bahay lang ang ginagawa. Ngunit sa amin, pang-apat na tao ang aming ginagawa. Okay? But we know that the grace of God is flowing. Ang motto nga namin, ang prinsipyo namin ay Matthew chapter 6.33. Sabi ng marami, walang panahon sa Diyos, walang oras sa Diyos. Abay, gumawa tayo ng oras sa Diyos. Gumawa tayo ng panahon sa Diyos kung wala. ba? Diba? Napakasimple. And God can make a way. And sabi ni Don Moen, God will make a way. Kung tayo kasama ang Diyos, we will also make a way. Kasama natin ang Diyos, He can make a way. Then we can make a way also. Amen? So wala pong dahilan sa isang kristyano na makinig, umupo, at matuto sa kaparaanan at prinsipyo ng Diyos. This is number two, true to ponder. There is a response required from us. If only we have paid attention to my commandments, then your well-being would have been like a river. Hallelujah! Tuloy-tuloy ang pag-agos at pagdaloy ng pagpapala. Amen? Hallelujah! Purihin ang Diyos sa katotohanan ito. Inconvenience, disadvantage, tayo po ang gagawa ng paraan. Okay? Tayo po ang gagawa ng paraan. I am the Lord your God who teaches you to profit. Tinuturoan tayong lumago at sumagana sa Kanya who leads you in the way you should go. Pinapangunahan po tayo follow orders. Amen? Follow orders. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse up, uh, verse number three, truth to ponder. There is an enemy to defeat. Sabi ni Pastor Wilbert, in every level, there is a new devil. In every level, there is a new devil. So, i-expect na po natin, bilang mga Kristiyano, talaga tayo ay makakasagupa. Tayo ay may mga makakasagupa na mga kaaway at kalaban. So, isa sa mga kalaban na dapat natin talunin, eto doon sa Matthew chapter 8, yung binasa natin, ano unang kanilang kalaban? Sakripisyo. Pangalawa, bagyo. Pangatlo, demonyo. Okay? Puro yun. Sakripisyo, bagyo, and demonyo. Kadalasan sa mga ito, kaya sa... Um, Kadalasan ito ang problema ng mga Kristiyano. Kulang sa sakripisyo, kulang sa bagyo, at uh, may, pag may mga bagyo at may mga demonyong pinagdadaanan, abay talagang nakikita, nasusubok, nasusulit ang ating pagsunod. Okay? Of course, matagal na pong tinalo ng Panginoon ng kaaway doon sa cross ng Kalbaryo. Ngunit, sa ating mga buhay, minsan tayo ang gumagawa nito, uh, tayo um, nag end up na may mga ganito sa buhay. Why? Kasi tayo rin ang pumipili ng ating mga desisyon. Uh, of course, which we don't want to highlight regarding this uh, devil. Ang kailangan na emphasize of course, lagi ang grasya ng Panginoon. Fear can destroy faith. Fear can destroy faith. Kung kaya naman lagi ito ang ginagamit ng kaaway. Okay? Para tayo ay uh, masupil sa pagsunod sa Panginoon. Laging nilalagyan niya tayo ng takot. Takot sa hal. Takot mawalan ng pera. Takot mawalan ng mga bagay-bagay sa ating buhay na siyang ating kakailangan. Fear of lackness. Okay? But faith can destroy not only fear, but the devil. Fearless faith can intimidate the enemy, according to Dr. Jonathan David. Faith can destroy not only fear, but the devil. Fearless faith can intimidate the enemy. 
Basahin natin sa verse 23 ng Matthew chapter 8. Then he got into the boat and his disciples followed him. Suddenly, a furious came, storm came up on the lake so that the waves swept over the boat. But Jesus was sleeping. The disciples went and woke him saying, Lord, save us. We're going to drown. He replied, You of little faith, why are you so afraid? Then he got up and rebuked the winds and the waves, and it was completely calm. The men were amazed and asked, What kind of man is this? Even the winds and the waves obey him. Okay? So, dito natin nakita na kapag dumating sa punto na buhay na ang nakataya, nasishake po ang ating mga pananampalataya. Aminin po natin bilang mga kahit mga kristyano na tayo, kahit maraming pagpapala, Just one news, one word lang. Nasisira po yung ating mood, yung ating emotion, yung ating um, anointing. Okay? Nasisira in just one bad news. However, if our faith is anchored, okay, to the faithfulness of God, even whatever the uh, whatever the enemy had place in our, uh, ilagay sa ating harapan, hindi po tayo matitibag nito. Hindi po tayo mapipigilan nito. E ang sakripisyo na yan, minsan, um, talagang marami ang napipigilan dyan, yung bagyo na yan, yung mga pagsubok sa buhay. Okay? Lalo na kapag may mga, um, may mga taong malapit sa atin na usually nagiging kasangkapan ng sitwasyon at ng kaaway para tayo ay ma-disturb and ma-distract. Ngunit kung alam na natin, buo na sa ating isipan, imagine these disciples in Matthew chapter 8, verse 23 to 27. Kasama na nila ang Panginoong Isus. Marami na ang nakitang pinagaling, okay? Marami ng mga himala. Ngunit sa isang hampas ng alon, dalawa, okay? bagyo. Okay? Talagang ano ang kanilang nabanggit? We're going to drown. Ang nakita nila ay ang kaaway, ang pagsubok, ang suliranin. Ngunit ang sabi ng Panginoon, you of little faith, why are you so afraid? Then he got up and rebuked the winds and the waves and it was completely calm. Remember, kasama nila ang Panginoong Isus dito. Remember, sa atin din, kahit gano'n tayo ka-anointed, kahit gano'n tayo ka-pinagpala nung nakaraan, in just one bad news, remember this truth. There is an enemy to defeat. Kung kaya naman, sabi ng Panginoon, um, sa John chapter 16, In this world, you, you may have many troubles, but take heart. Okay? There are many troubles. So, nalalaman ng Diyos na marami talaga tayong pagsubok na kailangan harapin. There is an enemy me to defeat. But take heart, I have overcome the world. Ipinakita na ng Panginoon kung papaano niya uh, sinumpong, tinalo ang gawa ng kaaway. Tingnan natin ang Panginoong Isus kung papaano niya pinagtagumpayan lahat ng pagsubok at kaaway. Even death to the cross. Even death to the cross. Ay kanyang napagtagumpayan. Because we need to, um, there is an enemy to defeat. To conquer territories as we journey, as we set sail, Expect na natin na may mga kaaway tayong dapat masupil. May mga kaaway tayong dapat mapagtagumpayan. Okay? As Jesus had overcome, as He is, so are we. He is the author and perfecter of our faith. That is why whenever we face such trials, whenever we face enemy and defeat, it is not the conclusion. Ang conclusion, I have overcome the world, Jesus said. Ayun po ang conclusion. So, hindi ang sitwasyon ang nagpapasya, kundi ang Diyos na siyang dakila. So, ayun po ang ating ang panghawakan. Huwag na po tayong manibago, huwag na po tayong um, kumbaga magulat na nandiyan ang kaaway. Expect it 
for you to defeat the enemy. Okay? Expect it that there's an enemy, but it is an enemy to defeat. It is an enemy to defeat. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why? Because in our weakness, sabi, God's power is made shown. God's glory is made um, when I am weak, then I am strong because of the name of the Lord. Dahil sa kapangyarihan ng ating Panginoon, doon po mas nakikita ang kapangyarihan ng Diyos. Mas natatalo ang mga kaaway. Number four, there are promises to receive. There are promises to receive. So, in our journey, the promise we have in Christ, His faithfulness, His good, pleasing, and perfect will, that is the anchor. The anchor of our salvation is Christ and where He is right now, at the right hand of God, seated on the throne. Hallelujah! If that is the promise to receive, sabi ng Panginoon, Hallelujah! Um, according to John chapter 4, verse 34, My food, said Jesus, is to do the will of Him who sent me and to finish His work. Okay? The very thing that Jesus, uh, that makes Jesus stronger, okay, is doing the will of God. Always receiving the promises of God. Always walking to experience God's goodness. Kaya hindi po kinakapos, hindi kinukulang, hindi uh, tumitigil sa pagsunod ang ating Panginoon. Why? Because... It is the food for our soul. Diba? The more we see God's promises, the more we experience God's goodness, ito po yung nagbibigay ng fuel sa atin na magpatuloy. Matalino po ang Diyos, mabuti ang Diyos, at talagang nalalaman niya na kinakailangan natin yung source of empowerment, source of strength. But this can only happen, okay, this can only happen when we walk in His will and do to finish His work. Sabi nga ni Pastor Wilbert, the trademark anointing of the sons of the kingdom is to represent the king and advance his kingdom. The trademark anointing of the sons of the kingdom is to represent the king and advance his kingdom. So, kaya hindi napapagod, hindi kinakapos, hindi tumitigil. Bakit? Dahil laging busog. Okay? At kumpleto sa kasaganaan, kung kaya laging nagpapatuloy sa pagsunod sa kalooban ng Diyos. Okay? Laging uh, ito ang ating tinitingnan yung, uh, laging, hindi lang natin tinitingnan, nakikita, nararanasan, at nalalakaran. There are promises to receive. Laging na-fulfill yung salita niya kasi yun din ang ating nilalakaran. And every time we do the will of God, kagaya ni Jesus dito sa John chapter 4.34, every time we do the will of God, we are sustained, we are empowered, we are equipped. By what? By His presence and His loving kindness shown to us. Itong mga patutuo, yung mga testimonies, na lalakaran na lang natin yan, na tatamasan, na, na, um, na patuloy na sumasagana. Kasi, everything on earth is the Lord's. Okay? Everything is made by Him and for Him. And in Him, all things hold together. Sabi sa Colossians chapter, six, uh, chapter 1, verse 16-17, all things are made by Him and for Him. And in Him, all things are held together. Ibig sabihin, kung habang tayo sumusunod sa Panginoon, lahat ng Kanyang pangako, lahat ng bagay ay nagmula sa Kanya, at patungo rin sa Kanya, silver and gold are mine. And as we abide in Him, we move with Him, it is only natural for us to encounter God's blessing. God's goodness, God's promises fulfilled in our lives. Kaya nga sabi, when we, uh, when we follow Him, 
in his in his instruction and commandments blessings will overtake us true kasi sabi sa Colossians chapter 1 na yun everything is made by him and for him and all things hold together through him papunta sa kanya and as we follow him it is naturally to receive the promises of God so number 4 truth to ponder, there are promises to receive. Kaya hindi po mahirap maglingkod sa Panginoon. Why? He will sustain us with His promises. With His words of truth, we can surely and uh, we can surely testify that God's word is true. That's God's word. God's word is true. Kaya napakasaya po maglingkod sa Panginoon. Sabi ng ating mentor, marinig niya lamang sa isang pastor na talagang um, masasabing masaya mong likod sa Panginoon, masaya na siya. Kaya praise God because He is true in His words. Di ba? Number one truth, He is faithful. God, there is no one like our God because He is faithful. He is sure to fulfill His promises. And number five, there are signs and wonders to manifest. There are signs and wonders to manifest. Sabi sa Matthew chapter 8 verse 24, Jesus was asleep amidst waves. Sa verse 28, no devil's greatest tool is fear, and he don't want uh, so he don't want us. He doesn't want us to finish God's purposes and plan and plans. He will use violence to frighten us, to build fear. But God wants us to go to the other side. So for signs and wonders to manifest, okay. The least that you can do is follow instruction. For signs and wonders to manifest, the least that you can do is follow instructions according to Dr. Jonathan David. So in this, I will conclude. 40 days and 40 nights, Goliath speaks to Saul and Israelite. Seven years oppressed by Midianites, Gideon. Okay? the life of Gideon and his generation. Seven years. But remember this, it only takes one word of the Lord to cross over. Deliverance came, freedom came, signs and wonders has break forth, and it only takes one word for life to come forth. Alright? So the least way that we can do is follow instruction. Matthew chapter 24 verse 14 And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations and then the end will come As you can see this gospel the word of God the word of instruction the impartation of truth knowledge and wisdom the kingdom will come and the end will come Ibig sabihin, the end, the consummation of kingdom here on earth will happen by the gospel preached, by the word instructed. So when there is preaching, teaching, and impartation of the word, spirit, and life, receive it, receive it, follow instruction, then signs and wonders are natural, naturally manifesting. Open heavens will normally uh, happen to us. And this will be called the church unusual, journeying to our destiny. Nothing can stop us. We will conquer new territories. Okay, establish God's rulership in every domain. No, that is why um, uh, WRB once said, Wala nang pinagkaiba ang langit at lupa. Wala nang pinagkaiba ang langit at lupa. WRB once said. And that is the consummation of God's kingdom here on earth. The kingdom of this world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of His Christ, and He will reign forever and ever. Revelations chapter 11, verse 15. So what makes a heaven a heaven? It's because of the very presence of God. It's because His Holy Spirit dwelling in us, So it doesn't matter wherever we are, whether we, we are here on earth or the life next to this. What matters is we experience God's truth, His faithfulness, His rule and sovereignty in us. Wala nang pinagkaiba ang langit at lupa. 
and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached and the end will come. The consummation of heaven here on earth is what we receive when we follow orders. And this gospel has been preached to us. So whenever it is preached, we receive it. Hallelujah. Let's pray to the Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord Jesus. And we thank you, Holy Spirit, that when we receive this gospel, and it is preached to our hearts and our lives, the kingdom will come and the end has come. Wala nang pinagkaiba ang langit at lupa. Why? Because the very presence of God is with us. Hallelujah. The very presence of God is, is in us and nararanasan po namin na ang Diyos ay walang katulad sapagkat lagi niyang kinakasihan ang kanyang pangako sa aming buhay ng katotohanan sa pamamagitan ng kanyang pangalan. Pangalawa, ang aming response ay laging nakatuon na sa kanya. Our well-being would have been flowing like a river and the waves of the sea. And there is normally the enemy will be normally defeated in us and there are promises to receive normally na lang na open ang heaven sa amin. It doesn't matter if it is double decade or or how many decades will come. As long as that God is with us, there are signs and wonders to manifest. Hallelujah. The church at New School will now be manifesting and be experienced by everyone who follow orders. When we follow orders, we are now in the journey of going towards our destiny. And hindi na rin mahirap makatungo, maranasan makatikim ng iyong kalooban. Ano ba ang iyong kalooban? His good, pleasing, and perfect will. That is what we declare. That is what we receive. When we follow orders, when we receive impartation of instruction of word, truth, and life by our grace carrier, we experience heaven, consummation of heaven on earth. We thank you, Father God. We thank you, Lord Jesus. And we thank you, Holy Spirit, from for the abundance of your grace. This we all pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and Amen. God bless everyone and God bless uh, SCB. Were you blessed with the message today? If so, please like, subscribe, and hit the bell button below for updates. Thank you for watching and see you next streaming.